I want to talk about short selling. Now this is sales of shares not owned by the investor but borrowed through a broker and later they're going to be purchased to replace the loan. Now you want to sell short because you believe the price will fall. So normally we think about buying low and selling high. Here you're doing it in reverse order. You're going to sell first at the higher price and hopefully buy back the shares at a lower price. So let's take a look at a couple of payoff diagrams. On the left here, I have a long position or buying position. This is what we're used to seeing. Suppose you bought the stock at $100. If it went up to $110, you'd make a $10 profit. Okay, I'm ignoring things like transactions costs. On the other hand, if the price of the stock fell to $80 a share, you'd lose $20. And the worst that can happen here, if it's a cash purchase, if you haven't purchased on margin, is you lose $100 a share, right? The shares go to zero, you lose 100 bucks. Now, short selling is the mirror image, essentially, of this. If you sell short at $100 a share, if the price goes up to 110 now you've sold it at 100 and you're buying it back at 110 so you lose $10. Of course, if the price falls to 80, you've sold it at 100, you buy it back at 80, and you make a $20 profit. Now, the interesting things here are that in the case of the long position or the buy position, the worst that happens is you can lose 100 bucks, and there's no limit. That's why I have an arrow here. There's no limit to how much money you can make because theoretically the price of the stock could go to anything. Right? It could go to, well, Berkshire Hathaway stock sells for, um, as of this recording, over $400,000 a share. Now, on the flip side here with the short position, the most you can make is $100. You've sold it at $100, and the best that can happen is the price falls to zero, so essentially buy it back for zero and you make $100. Bucks. But there's no limit to how much money you could lose. So you sold it at $100, if it went to $10,000 a share, right you'd lose an awful lot of money so this is a very risky um, position to take all right what are the mechanics of short selling you borrow the stock from the broker but you're going to have to post margin this security deposit I have another video where I've discussed that the broker sells the stock and deposits the proceeds from the sale as well as the margin into a margin account and you cannot withdraw the proceeds until you cover the position. That is, until you close out the position. And you close out the position by buying back the stock. What the broker does is returns the title to the party from which it was borrowed, and then now you've closed out your position. In terms of margin, the required initial margin is usually 50%. Um, it's actually more for low price stocks. And in the case of a short sale, you're going to be liable for any cash flows. So if you borrow someone's shares of stock and the um, company issues a dividend, you must um, pay for that dividend that the person is losing because essentially they don't own the stock. Um, there used to be a zero tick and an up tick rule. That is, you could not sell short if, unless the price, the last price was up. It was meant to keep people from forcing the price of the stock to go down and down and down by selling it and selling it and selling it. Okay, but this was eliminated in July of 2007. All right, let's take a look at, at the margin positions on a short sale. So let's consider um, short selling 100 shares of stock at $50 per share. The initial margin requirement is 50%. And the maintenance margin is 30%. So here the price per share is $50. And we're going to look at it in two other conditions where the price falls to 30 and the price goes up to 70. What are the proceeds from the initial short sale? Well, you sold short at $50, 100 shares, so you get $5,000. You have to put in 50% of that amount, or $2,500. So the total deposit or the total amount in the margin account is $7,500. So if the price stays at 50, the current cost of buying back the stock 
is going to be five thousand dollars right it's still fifty dollars a share hundred shares still five thousand the amount of equity you have in your account is the <clears throat> five thousand right and you take your actual margin and you take the um, the equity here of 2500 and divide it by the price of buying this back 2500 divided by 5000 is 50%. So you're okay. All right? If the if the maintenance margin is 30%, you're well above that maintenance margin. No problem, no margin call. Suppose the price falls to $30 a share. Okay? You still have $7500 deposited with the broker. It only costs 3000 to buy back the stock and you have $4,500 in equity in the account, right? The uh, amount that's deposited minus the cost of buying back the shares, $4,500. So if you take $4,500 and divide it by $3,000, you have a 150% um, margin. So you're good, right? No, no margin call. But what if the price rises? This is when you get into trouble. Price rises to $70 a share. You still had the original 7,500 in there. Now it costs 7,000 to buy back the stock. You now only have $500 in equity in the account. Take the equity, divide it by the cost of buying this back. Now you only have 7.14% in your margin account. So you're going to get a margin call. All right, when are you gonna get a margin call? At what price? Well, when the equity is less than or equal to 30% of the market value. So how do we figure this out? The market value equals the um, 7,500 tw total margin account divided by one plus the 0.30 or the 30% uh, maintenance margin value. So that's $5,769 divided by 100 shares so when the price rises above 5769 you're going to get a margin call all right so just to wrap this up let's just compare buying shares with short selling all right if you buy shares your initial cash flow is negative right you put up money to buy the shares um in the next time period, you may receive a dividend. So the assumption is you receive a dividend and you sell the shares. So what's your ending cash flow? The ending price you sold it for plus the dividend. On the other hand, here's a short sale over these two time periods. You borrow the shares and you sell it. So you have a positive cash flow. You're receiving money for the short sale. In time period one, you have to repay any dividend and you have to buy back uh, the shares to replace the original ones you borrowed. So your ending cash flow here, your cash flow here is negative of the ending price plus a dividend. Notice that these are exactly the opposite, right? Because this person's buying and this person's selling. So the profit you receive in this case from the short sale is the initial price you sold it for minus the the sum of the ending price plus the dividend up here the profit if you purchase the stock is the ending price plus the dividend minus the initial price all right and a negative number implies that you have a cash outflow here so you can see you're kind of doing the opposite normally you make money by buying low and selling high but if you believe that the price is too high and that it's going to fall, then you may want to sell first and buy it back at a later time period, right? People did this um, during the housing crisis and people sold short. There was a, a movie from the Michael Lewis book, The Big Short. Um, so you, you find that people take advantage of this. There's ways to make money whether you think price is going up or price is going down.